Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of Circuit Predor Remastered! Uh, today, gonna be Light vs. Snow here on Circuit Breakers. This is an RJB replay. Bottom right's gonna be our blue Terran player. It is Light, and in the bottom left, it's gonna be Snow. Who's been on a rampage recently? Is likely to be another victim of Snow's? Let's wait and see. Uh, Lucifer Morning, who is light, does an eyebrow raise at Snow for some reason? Not entirely sure why, but Snow reacts with some Korean. <laughs> Anywho, hope things are good with you. Things are okay by me. Feeling a tiny, tiny bit under the weather today, but... Should be back to full strength tomorrow. Ah! I just watched the latest Spider-Verse movie. Man, I really enjoyed it. I liked Into the Spider-Verse quite a bit when it came out a couple years ago. Kind of came out of nowhere, knocked everyone's socks off. Everyone was really impressed by it. The animation style was amazing. The characters, the voice work. I mean, it's a beautiful movie and the music, everything about it was just great. Knocked everyone's socks off. And everyone's like, ah! gonna be a sequel and there was and it came out it came out last week I watched it today June the 1st man it was good I will say as someone who doesn't watch trailers of things that I'm gonna watch anyway because they spoil things and I hate getting spoiled uh, I didn't know it was a part one I was going in there expecting a full story and then it, like it gets to this climactic point in the story and nothing's been resolved and everything's all intense and then it's like and the end We'll see you in another two years to finish the story. And I was like, what? I was so depressed. I'm still kind of depressed to buy this. And look, some of you who've seen the trailers are like, yeah, but they said it in the trailers. Look, man, I'm just saying, when I bought my ticket, what I want it to say when I buy my ticket on Fandango or like on Cinemark or wherever I'm going to get my tickets, it should say part one. I just want to know. I still would have seen it. I still would have gone to see it. I just don't want to be, didn't want to be surprised by the fact that the story doesn't end here. I, I was, oh. Anyway, highly recommended. I mean, I don't know if it's fair to say this, but I think they surpassed the first movie with the second one. The fight scene choreography is... All, it's like nothing I've ever seen before, especially in a Spider-Man movie. I think it has the best Spider-Man action, like web-swinging, slinging, fighting... Of any Spider-Man anything, period. What they're able to do with the animation and what they do with the animation to push and pull at the boundaries of what can be done with Spider-Man is mind-blowing. It is so good. I cannot recommend it highly enough. So, if you're into Spider-Man at all, check it out. Even if you're not into Spider-Man, maybe check it out because it's just honestly that good. And the different animation styles, I don't know how they make them all work together like they do. It's nuts. Like, if you haven't seen the first movie, maybe you don't are not aware of this, but there are different animation styles in these Spider-Verse films. It's not just one style. And they're all over the place, and they're interacting with each other, and I, I don't know how they do it. I really don't. So, anyway, that's my completely unsponsored plug for a movie that I really liked today. Now, what are we doing? Well, it's a bunker at the front for Dragoon Pressure, expanding are both players. Plus, there's a factory with a machine shop coming in here from light. So, it's a PVT. There's nothing else you need to know about what's going on here, right? Everything's fine. Robotics facility on the way. That could be for drops. That could also just be for observers to do with the spider mines that are a threat to the Protoss at this stage of the game. You know how all this works. I'm not here to tell you how it works. Right, right. Nothing at all is being researched to the machine shop, though, which I find interesting. Why would there be nothing at all researching at the machine shop? Hmm. No siege mode? No spider mines? No speed for vultures? Nothing, really? Because these dragoons are going to start firing on this bunker real soon. I guess one tank without siege mode should be able to chase these dragoons away. But if, what if there were like five dragoons here? They would jump on your tank and it would be hurt. Maybe not die, but seriously. Uh, what is... Okay. So light's finally getting spider mines. Wow. I guess he was just SCVing up instead, trying to get a worker lead here, which he's at 23 to 24 workers right now, not bad. Hmm. 
So, oh, and it's a support bay opening from Snow. He wants to be aggressive. Let's do this thing. So yeah, this is an RJB replay, so you know it's good, right? You know it's good. Have you ever been disappointed by an RJB replay? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Check him out. YouTube.com slash at RJB underscore TV. Oh, Snow's got to put some probes to work. Have you ever done this? Yes. So don't feel bad. Snow does it too sometimes. Everybody does it. Flash does it. If Flash does it, you can feel pretty good that doing it sometimes is not going to be the reason you lose a game. Now look, if you have like eight probes sitting here for 13 minutes, then sure, don't do that. But you know, just having a few a few probes sitting there for 30 seconds or so is not the end of the world. It's doable. I love slow vultures running around laying down spider mines because it just feels wrong. Like they should be zipping in here. They should be fast, but nope, they don't have the speed upgrade. All right, so what do we got here? We got a shuttle. We're waiting for a reaver. In preparation for this. Ooh, good scout. Ooh, see, just barely catches the Robo Bay here. That is a decent scan from Light. Not bad at all. Little Marine Siege Tank Spider Mine Push. Okay. Pretty standard in TVPs. Doesn't like what he sees. Decides to go home. Anything to deal with a reaver drop. Uh, again, you scouted this. He's getting Caron boosters, so he's going to try to shove away the shuttle with Goliath, which is a smart thing to do. Maybe getting Goliath a little bit earlier than he normally would, because normally you want those for Arbiters, but if it's going to be Reaver stuff earlier, then you make Goliath earlier at Trax. Kind of worried about Snow not getting a third base here, though, because you do need to out-expand the Terran player, or they're going to show up with 87 Siege Tanks. And you're going to have a bunch of stuff, but not enough stuff, and then you're going to die. You need to have way more stuff then the Terran player, if you're going to beat him. That's what third bases are for. That's what fourth bases are for. And I'm concerned by what Snow is up to here. Got an observatory. Got our Citadel of a Dune. Kind of far away from DTs, but not that far away from DTs. Ooh, is he building a turret under that engine? He is building it under the engineering bay, so it can't be targeted specifically. Ah, that's so sick. That is so sick. So Snow is escorting this shuttle over because he knows it got scanned. He knows Light's generally ready for this. So he's going to bring his Dragoons along in case there's something ready to try to snipe the shuttle before it gets over here. And then he's going to try to start getting some stuff done. But wow, Siege Mode is just now starting. Light is not taking very traditional upgrade paths here today, is he? Observer parks in, sees what we're dealing with, sees no tanks behind this bunker, so bunker going to die. See you later, bunker. Reaver shot. Extra dead. Uh... The full evacuation. This is why you don't delay siege mode? Just a quick thought. What the heck is Light even doing? I mean, oh, good snipe. Okay, so the shuttle is going to die without a doubt. Okay, shuttle's down. But these tanks don't have siege. What is going on? Snow's like, wait, it's eight minutes. You don't have siege? Did I just win the game? I mean, it's a two base attack from Snow, so it's going to be a little bit unexpected and very dangerous. But, uh, you don't expect to show up at 8 minutes and have no siege mode available for the Terran player. But SCV's body blocking, Goliath's providing additional DPS, and they do manage to get rid of Snow's army and get him out of there. But that's a lot of lost mining time. A lot of SCVs died there as well. And by a lot, I mean, I don't know, it's still 46 SCVs to 44 probes. Third base coming in from Snow down here, minerals only. But, I don't know, it just feels kind of late. Both players are playing weird right now third base is already done inside the main base for light We've got a science facility already has a starport obviously is going to go for emp and all this crazy stuff arbiter tribunal is on the way from snow we're going to see some of that stasis some of that recall hmm so again one of your goals is to whittle down the tank count if you're a protoss player and i think snow's done a pretty good job of that he did take several tanks down because again no siege mode. What in the name of Fargus McDudson is going on here? I mean, it's done now, so let bygones be bygones, I guess. But look at this. Three bases for the Terran. Not even a third base exists yet here for Snow. He's down in total worker count. Scans into the main. Sees Arbiters in production. Cool, that's fine. I mean, he can assume it's an Arbiter because of the Tribunal down here. 
and Snow kind of considering going for a fourth, which I feel like he should do. Why don't you have an observer with you, Dragoon Army? You're going to run into spider mines and die. Oh, there's an observer here. Fine, it worked out. And, dude, the light's expanding to the 6 o'clock, too. So he knows the third base exists here from Snow. He's going to try to shut it down. Dude, this is... Uh, this is looking really bad for Snow all of a sudden here. But the counterattack, the Dragoons. Ooh, Ob's taking some missile turret. Hurt hits does not go down. Uh, suddenly, we're just going to trade a base for a base here. Is the natural base going to die for light? The third base is definitely going to die for Snow. He's not saving that. But the bigger question is, what's Snow going to get done over here? Uh, okay, Nexus gone. But no bases have died for light here. See, Tank target fired most excellently. SCVs are pretty good fighters against Dragoons when all is said and done. It's not very intuitive, but by golly, it is the truth. More Dragoons pouring in here, bringing some Zealots. Oh, I like that quite a bit. It's only SCVs fighting these guys. That's not great at all. Oh, but on... Okay, this is insane. This game is bonkers. RJB is not wrong. Snow is on the other side of the map. He's taking on the natural base of light, but the front door of Snow is under attack as well. Siege tanks. Not... Okay, they're going to say not even bothering to siege up. No, they are sieging up. Dragoons and zealots wandering into the third base of light. Actually, the second base is technically alive here. Siege tanks do manage to hold this ramp. This is looking like Light kind of just has this. If he can wipe out this second Nexus, I think Snow's just going to tap out. Sure, losing your third base as Light is not good, but your natural is still alive. Your main is still alive. You still have 41 SCVs. Yeah, I think he's... DTs trying to wander down here. Great scan, though. Is it enough? No! The DTs are still alive. Okay, one of them survives it, wipes out all the tanks, and Snow hangs on to his natural base. Woo! This is a little bit nip and tuck here. A lot of damage on that Nexus, though. All the shields are gone. They'll come back, but it's not super, super fast, is it? Every Protoss player can tell you that. Finally, Vulture speeds on the way from Light. What? are these upgrade timings today? I don't understand them. Snow wanders back into the natural base like he owns the joint because he kind of does. He's been here three or four times already today. We're only 12 minutes into the... Oh, that's a little bit sloppy with your obs there, Snow. He's expanding to the left side. He's expanding re back to his minerals base. If he can get those back up and Light can't retake his third, Snow might just be able to swing this thing around. Snow has taken some risks trying to get that double expansion to pay off here. And the fact that the vultures don't... Well, they have speed now, so never mind. Speed vultures could be a pretty big threat to this base or to this base because there's really nothing guarding uh, either of those nexuses as they warp in. Yeah, permanent detection now for any DTs that might exist in the form of that science vessel. Command center cruising on into this third base again. Okay, so holding this is going to be a big deal from light. What upgrades is he at? Mm, plus two attack, plus one armor. Nice. Gateway is at plus one attack. No armor, not too weird. Stasis is on the way from Snow. 49 to 47 workers, though, in favor of the Terran. And his third base is back. He's got a fourth CC here, too. He's just going to go ahead and land down at the 6 o'clock and maybe try to make that happen. Ah, place your bets here at 13 minutes, man. I don't know what we're looking at here. It feels oh, a little bit closer, maybe, than... Either player would like it. 106 to 97 supply in favor of Snow. A bit of a bigger army value. Like 10 or 12 more army value. It's not really enough to overcome the sheer cost effectiveness of mech here. With the spider mines. With the siege tanks. With the vultures, right? So EMP is on the way. A lot of zealots out. As we all know, Zealots will destroy Siege Tanks, given the opportunity to, but Spider Mines and Vultures are the things that keep them from doing that. So, it's the balance. It's the balance of the PVT. This has been pretty aggressive so far. 14 minutes, nobody is close to maxed out. Nobody is feeling comfortable enough to really go ham with that right now, right? They're spending their cash, sure. Bit of a supply block here from Light. That's embarrassing. Snow's not that far away from a supply block either, though. Gotta watch out for that, but he's throwing down two pylons. More cognizant of that, I think, ow, than, uh, than Light is at the moment, anyway. 
Yeah, four bases for Snow. So after getting knocked down to two, he gambles, double expands, gets away with it. By that I mean that assumes that Light doesn't come down and wipe out this nine o'clock base because I think he's kind of posturing to do it. Or maybe heading down to get this Minerals Only base as Snow bites on the bait up here, but he can recover pretty quickly taking this route down to defend this base. So, ah, he's all right. Siege tank count is a little bit intimidating, though. It reaches a point where there are just enough tanks, plus threes on the way for those guys, too. Recalls coming in from Snow. Recall fans, rejoice. We might see some good stuff here today. This has been relatively low econ for a 15-minute game. Just because so much damage has been done to everyone's economy in this game so far, including mine and yours. That's how much economy has been damaged today. The viewers and the casters are feeling it, too. Oh, Vulture, get out of there, man. No. Dragoons trying to clear out a spider minefield. Can only do it to a certain point before the tanks start engaging with them. They know that. They know that. This Arbiter is going for a recall. Waiting for that recall to finish. Good scan, seeing the army positioning here, and Snow's doing a pretty good job, just kind of holding on to his four bases. Man, a four basing light is pretty scary stuff, though. Mm, scanning up, sees there's an Arbiter in there, sees the number of Dragoons, gonna toss an EMP down on that Arbiter. Arbiter flees. Nice micro! So instead, EMP is the Dragoons, which is nice. But EMPing the Arbiter would have been the big get there, for sure. Another expansion up the left side here from Snow. Hundred and eighty nine one fifty one overall supply in favor of snow army value maxed out at this point, right? Anything over 185 I basically consider maxed out in a game of Brood War. So Snow's there starting to build up a bit of a bank here. Light, pumping tanks, pumping vultures, waiting for that plus three vehicle attack to finish up. Plus one attack with plus two coming in from snow. So the upgrade advantage is to the Terran player pretty effectively. Did he just scan up here? He's got a vulture up here. I guess, no? I don't know. Yeah, I think this is going to come down to Light's going to max out. Make some kind of an attack here. And then if that works out, good for him. And if it doesn't, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Because Snow's economy is about to go through the roof here. It's easy. Once you have this space, it's easy to take the top left expansion too. Not even a hassle whatsoever. All right, Vultures cruising on into this minerals only base. They have plus three. They feel pretty confident going after these cannons, which will buy time for the probes at the very least here. Ah, some of Snow's units kind of wander down into the south, which is a pretty entrenched Terran position. Not great for them. Yeah, a couple probes died here at this minerals only base, but not that big of a deal for Snow. I'm just gonna say not even not even really worth worrying about. That's not gonna keep him up at night. Four cannons protecting this top left. Probe wants to expand, but Spider Mine says nope. Vultures throwing down spider mines to cover their tracks. Ugh, spider Mine getting hits there. Vultures just trying to sneak on in here and just snipe some probes, right? They're not going to fight all of these cannons. Getting behind the mineral line is a good place to be, and it is. Full evacuation of probes from this location. Spider mines laid. Vultures lying in wait here, too. Ow. God. Poor zealot. But, I mean, they're kind of... That's their job, man. Is to absorb spider mine hits. All right, man, Light's maxed out, Snow's maxed out, Snow has a bigger bank than Light, 2,000 minerals to 1,000 minerals, but Light has more gas, and it's time to go, man. Duh. Oh, this is a stasis play? That's a stasis play, nice. Oh. EMP the Arbiter in exchange for that stasis. Five siege tanks get stasis right in the face, nice.
A little bit of storm going down, but High Templar getting targeted there as well. Not enough Dragoons to really engage with this, but they do force a siege up. Light immediately unsieges once you recognize as the Dragoons are pulling back, and it's time to slowly march across the map here and see what damage can get done. Snow is just delay, delay, delay. Force these tanks to siege up when they, you know, once they've moved about six inches. Stasis, a whole bunch of them. God, that was a sick stasis. Very nicely done here from Snow. Now he's bringing the Zealots up. He's going to try to engage with this while half the army has been stasis Yo. Here goes nothing. EMPs. Not really a thing anymore here. Is there enough? I mean, is there enough Protoss to actually get in here? Wipe out what's left. Oh, another stasis group. Maybe. Man, this was a great engagement from Snow. Killer skill on display here with the spell casting. But hold on. Reinforcements from Light show up. Everything on the ground from Snow dies, and Light actually manages to save these guys that are in stasis as they come out. 153 to 101 supply. What? Small attempt to get siege tanks up attacking this minerals only base. Now a little bit of Vulture support, Spider Mine support here too, and uh, Light? Man, I was all over that engagement by Snow. I was fanboying so hard, but I think Light's fine. He has an advantage here, both an economy and an overall army supply. He just wiped out one of the bases of snow. It's not his newest one. That's the big deal. Another great stasis, man. Another great stasis, but plus three siege tanks wandering into your battlefield, not even sieged up. Mm. Still not a great feeling if you're snow here. Uh, what does he have? Is this it? Is this snow's army? Uh... Boy, howdy. He's making five Dragoons and four Zealots at a time, but they're not here yet. Oh, this is not good. I don't think Snow has enough to deal with this. He's bringing an Arbiter down to go for another Stasis. And look at that. Light's expanded on the right side and is expanding in the top corners too. Double expanding here. 173 to 112 supply. I really feel like that engagement in the middle, if Snow had been able to hold the ground there for just another few seconds, wiped out the tanks that were coming out of stasis, he could have won this game. It's a defensive recall from Snow. It's a little bit interesting. Defending that 9 o'clock position with the Dragoons and the Zealots flying in, warping in out of nowheresville. That's what they're here for. And that's it. GG, not enough. Reinforcements from Light are too strong and light. Wins it in 22 minutes and 42 seconds. Dude. Yeah, I think this is just a, a cautionary tale and not letting your Terran opponent max out on three attack mech with three armor too, just for good measure. Because it's so hard to deal with it. It is just so hard to deal with a maxed out Terran army. It's exactly what happened here. So Snow put all of his eggs into the basket of stasis, stasis, stasis. Three groups of tanks get stasis here. He tries to get on top of them, wipe them out as they come out of stasis, but Light's economy was too good. He just had too much income coming in. He had too many factories rolling. He was just pouring in reinforcements all the time. Just had enough to get rid of Snow's ground army there as his tanks were coming out of stasis. And then whoosh, the counterattack was real, came to the south. Came to the left side, Snow's army uh -uh, was not able to remax as effectively, not as cost efficiently as Light here, and Light getting that win. This is one of those games where Protoss fans are going to comment that Siege Tanks are overpowered, and every time a Protoss beats a Terran, it's like Recall and Stasis is overpowered, and it's like, yeah, I feel like the game's in a pretty good spot. If we can get balance complaints on both sides of TVP, just depending on who wins, right? Uh, it's always fun too. like ZVP fans. I posted, I think four straight a while ago, four straight games where Zerg beat Protoss. And then I posted one PVZ win. And like, there were two or three comments saying that Zerg can't handle storm and Protoss is too overpowered and they have too many answers to everything. And it's like, um, okay. But like, did you see the, the, the games I post recently? And no, probably not. <laughs> They probably didn't, in fairness, but yeah, hit that like button if you enjoyed that one, Light fans. That was impressive. This is probably as well as we've seen Light play on the channel in a while. He's very, very, very good, but 
sometimes his games can leave a little bit to be desired, if I'm being brutally honest, which sometimes I am. But yeah, economy, engagements, Snow Gamble too much on being able to hold the center here, couldn't quite pull it off, and then just kind of got rolled after that. Good early game, too. Light was late with those upgrades, and he still won. I don't get that. That's really weird. 131,000 points from Snow, 147 from Light, outproducing the Protoss player by 2 to 1, and yeah. They both killed similar numbers, but this outproduction is what made Light get that win. 15-4 raised buildings in favor of Light, and uh, ugh, if you get outspent by your Terran opponent in 22 minutes, even just by a little bit, just by like 1,800 resources, no, it's going to be very tough to beat them. So Snow put a lot of his eggs into two baskets. One, the two-base early aggression basket, which he kind of got lucky with, because Light didn't have siege mode ready to go when that attack showed up. A light held anyway through the miracle of being awesome. And yeah, I think that really put Snow back economically way more, way more than he wanted to be. And Light ended up outspending him, which is just <sighs> oof. I believe the kids would say oof. So GG, well done. Two thumbs up for our guy Light. And that's going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.